Becoming your strongest financial self? Good plan. Northwestern Mutual's Guide to Good Financial Planning can help you balance spending and saving, set goals, and start creating the life you want to be living. Get it today at northwesternmutual.com slash good plan. The Northwestern Mutual Life Insurance Company, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Hi, I'm Bran. I love Hallmark Christmas movies. (laughs) (laughs) Hello, I'm Panda, (laughs) and I like Hallmark Christmas movies. I'm Dan, and I despise Hallmark Christmas movies, and this is the Deck Deck the the Hallmark Hallmark Podcast. Podcast. Hold on. So, if you can't tell, this is the fourth one of the evening, and we're as excited as ever. Guys, happy Thanksgiving! Live in the studio. Happy Thanksgiving. That's right. It's not so, the fourth so, one of the evening. Studio. So, so, yeah. Wow. No, that's Phil Collins. Guys, it um, feels so good. What, what's your What's your favorite uh, Thanksgiving memory? Fried turkey. I, I mean that in all honesty. My uncle Jeff, back in the day, used Jeff to make Cook? a fried. No, no, not Jeff. We're not. Uh, my uncle Jeff used to make a fried turkey that was delightful, so good. How about that? He would do it right out there, huh? Right out there. Mm-hmm. Was there any fear of uh, what is it when it's well? When it I mean, explodes? he uh, he was a pretty southern dude, but he did it right for sure. That's my favorite. How about you, Panda? Uh, one year when I lived in Michigan, I was a little boy. It snowed. My dad uh, took me in a sled and dragged me around all around the uh, neighborhood, and we went back and ate uh, Thanksgiving dinner. How about one that? Of wow, fond memory. Uh, I just like them all every year. It's just like, oh, it's happening again. I love it. I almost like, and I know this is going to sound almost sacrilegious. You always I say like stuff like you always do stuff like this more than Christmas. What was the thing he oh. said not too long ago where it was just like it? There's definitely no way that it's true. No, I don't remember because it's so many things. <laughs> he says it so often, guys. I feel really assaulted right now. Insulted. Mm. That's the word I wanted you, to use. We're not assaulting you. That's <laughs> no. for sure. No, insulted. I feel offended. I feel assaulted by how insulted I feel. Mm. They sound more similar than you would think. That's right. It's time for... <laughs> no, 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 no. Those are no. No, it wasn't. But don't cheapen it, okay? If there's a homonym, we'll do the game. But there isn't one yet. Hey, Dude, welcome to Deck the Hallmark, guys. Nice. Thanks. You're so aggressive. So much for rating and reviewing us and following us on the social medias. Over 4,000 Instagram followers. Can you believe that? That's shocking. That's too low. Let's it's, get it's your th- act together, It's Thanksgiving kids. right now, so we're closing in on 1,000 ratings and reviews Unbelievable. because of the help of you. 1,000 by Thanksgiving. Uh, 2019. And, <laughs> and, and you guys have been a big part of that. You know what? A lot of people are with family and friends this week that maybe don't know about the podcast. So can, I, can I do this? I, I would love when you're sitting around at Thanksgiving Thanksgiving table with your friends and your family. <laughs> when you go around and you share what you're thankful for, I want you to go, I'm th- you know what? I'm thankful for this podcast that I've been listening to called Deck the Hallmark. <laughs> that would be great. But what would be and better is it. you get your uncles, your aunts, your grandparents, anybody that has an iPhone but doesn't know how to use it. You go into iTunes and you just give us the five oh, stars. Yeah, yeah. In all of their, how easy is that? You're listening right now. I guarantee you can think of five iPhones. You can go in and just give us the five stars real quick. Thousand by Thanksgiving, it's on. And they've they've made it even easier. You, all you gotta do is you just gotta put their people's like uh, f- uh, fingerprints or put their face in front of it. Yeah, they're just giving iPhones away. They're just at this giving point. them away. Remember the good old days where we were super secure with just the numbers and Siri. You could never yeah. guess that. Mm, the four S with Siri. That was a big deal. I remember it. What hey. can I do? <laughs> I'm Siri. <laughs> Everybody would just make her say <laughs> random things. Siri has never sounded like that. Ever. I sure have. No, you have not. <laughs> Happy Thanksgiving, Siri. <laughs> Good oh Reddit. Everyone is turning this episode off, like collectively <laughs> turning it off right now. Good. Mm. Go spend hey, time Siri, with family. You want to tell us about our premier sponsor? I sure do. Nope. <laughs> Maybe you've heard of it. I'm not going to do that. I no, feel bad. No, no, no. That would not go well. Guys. Tell- yeah, we're, we're super thankful to the American Leprosy Mission uh, and all that they do around the world. They're located in our hometown. Their headquarters are in Greenville, South Carolina. And it has been our pleasure to help them accomplish their goal of curing leprosy around the world. And you can help us help them. That's exactly and, right. $30, a one-time gift of $30 can can help cure somebody of leprosy. It's not $30 a month. It's not $30 a day. It's just a one-time gift of $30. It's crazy. Right. You can literally help one person with just $30. Yeah, 
and here's the thing is, if you go to deckthehallmark.com and you click the link for American Leprosy Mission, there's a Christmas catalog, and you can actually choose how you want your gift or donation to be allocated. And this is something that uh, is, is if you're in the Christmas spirit of giving, mm. there's nothing like giving. There's no better feeling in the world. And you can do that uh, and help out a good cause in the process, and it's something we're really passionate yeah, about. Yeah, and you might be thinking, I thought leprosy wasn't that big of a deal. It's still a huge deal. Huge. It's massive. Uh, 50 children every day are diagnosed with with leprosy, mm, uh, and 4 million people are diagnosed and have disabilities because of it, uh, you can help cure it. That's a huge deal, guys. And maybe if you're one of those people that have been like, I've always wanted to buy a goat for Christmas, <laughs> this will allow you. This there is, is a goat in the catalog. To do that. A, a pair or of goats, if I'm not mistaken. Where else can you find that kind of information? <laughs> and, I, and, and on a serious note, before we talk about Christmas and Evergreen 2, Evergreening even harder, or, or whatever it's called... <laughs> Um, I got to be honest, like we all have day jobs. We all love our jobs. We love our wives, love our kids, love each other. Um, I never thought in a million years I could speak into a microphone and we would be listened to by tens of thousands of people and have the opportunity to help change the world uh, through just asking you to do something simple that we've all tried to do ourselves. And that's to give to those in need. And that uh, uh, is just fantastic. Can you please stop? (laughs) I just I'm trying to help. No, I appreciate that. So, thank you so Mr. much for Oh, I'm going to give an empowered speech, and I try to do the one thing that I can do, which is use my God-given gift of my pipes. Your pipes. And you won't let me do it. What if Siri sang? Hey, it's Siri. <laughs> <laughs> nope. We are the world. There it is. Much better. <laughs> it's time for Christmas and Evergreen Letters to Santa. It originally oh, that's aired <laughs> on November 18th. Evergreening ever harder. <laughs> Evergreening harder. <laughs> Uh, 2018, uh, November 18th, and it went a little something (laughs) like this. Lisa and Oliver are a team that go around and decorate stores that want to be remodeled and redesigned and whatnot, especially around the holidays. Every year, Lisa makes a New Year's resolution to go back to her hometown of Evergreen, but every year she backs out. Not this year. Oliver won't have it. This year is the year that she goes back to have Christmas and yeah, evergreen. evergreen. Santa. <laughs> <laughs> On her way back into town, she sees a broken down, beautiful red truck and she stops to help. It is then that she meets Kevin. She helps him get the truck started and then they go and they, they go their own way. Um, in the movie, that's the end. Just kidding. Here we go. As Lisa walks down the street of her old town, she gets a flashback, like a real legit flashback. And that's when we knew that this movie meant business but mm. the the flashback involved some uh some time that she spent with an older woman in town named daisy who has since passed away so lisa finds out that the that daisy's store is up for sale and she offers her services to, to fix it up and to decorate the store to help make daisy's store sell uh she's in need of a contractor to help though because there's some bigger things in there that she doesn't know what to do and you know who happens to have some contractor history our good friend Kevin. Um, <laughs> as they're beginning to clean up, they find this mysterious key. Luckily, there's a kid in town who thinks that it's going to be really fun to spend all of his holiday putting the key in every single keyhole in town to see what will happen. Sounds great. Speaking of <laughs> mysteries, they find a letter from 1993 underneath Santa's mailbox. The letter was from little Kevin, and it's about how he wishes things were how they used to be with the Christmas bells and the caroling and the whatnot. And we learn that Kevin has had a hard time around Christmas time and around Evergreen because of his mother's passing uh, back in 1993, and, and, and that he doesn't really like being in Evergreen anymore. So um, a lady comes into town to check out the store, and Ash she's looking at it, it comes out that everybody has read Kevin's letter from when he was a kid. Uh, the lady doesn't buy the store. Kevin's pretty taken aback by the letter, and so he kind of he kind of stor- storms off, kind of. Uh, Lisa remembers a store owner who is uh, looking to expand, get new stores, and so she convinces her to come up and look at the store. And she comes up with a plan. Bring back the things that were in Kevin's letter to help make the town even more magical so that this lady will have no choice but to buy this store. So Lisa uh, keeps throwing game at Kev. She's like, hey, let's get dinner together. Let's hang out. But no <laughs> dice. Kevin's not having it. Uh, Kevin Kevin comes uh, comes up to the end to surprise her mm. and he sees uh, he sees her getting all cozy with Oliver who has come into town. Uh, but she, she makes Kevin go on a walk with her. 
so that she can figure things out. And it's there that, that, that he discovers that Lisa and Oliver are just friends and that Oliver gets so freaking crazy when he sees ice. Like, he's so, he loves the ice. <laughs> he loves the ice. He does. <laughs> he does love the ice. We get a Christmassy montage and an almost kiss, and we still have 30 minutes left in the movie. They look talk uh, about what it uh, might look like if both of them moved to Evergreen while decorating an Evergreen. I mean, it's just like... Come on. It's perfect. Uh, it's it's with that that we get another almost kiss, followed immediately by another, another. almost kiss. Uh, the lady comes to look at the store, and instead of buying the store, she offers Lisa and Oliver a job where they would go around and they would help her expand. The only problem, the store that she's offering that she wants to open is in Boston. Kevin overhears it, but Lisa decides that uh, since they'll be running the store in Boston, she'll buy the store and run uh, a store in Evergreen. So she's going to buy Daisy stuff, but Kevin doesn't know that. Kevin just heard the the Boston part. So he takes a job in Maine and he immediately leaves him. He's like, I'm out of here. So, so much happens in this last 10 minutes of this movie. So buckle up. Here we go. (laughs) Lisa goes to find Kevin. And it turns out that the letter wasn't Kevin. It was Kevin's dad's letter to to Santa uh, because he wanted to, like, show his kid how to write a letter to Santa. Sure. Um, sure. (laughs) All the things in the letter were things that reminded him of his wife. And so he wanted those things to come back. The key was the key to make the church bells ring again. They couldn't figure it out. It was the key the whole time. He pressed the key and the the church bells rings. Kevin decides that he's going to stay in Evergreen. He kisses her. And a Christmas carol, um, and 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 that, my friends, is Christmas, Christmas and Evergreen wow. letters <laughs> to Santa. We did it, boys. Mm. How about that? I already mm. know where this is going. I can tell you right now. What do you mean? You guys both love this movie. Come you on. loved every second of it, and you thought it was great. I just know it in the fiber of my being. It's time for the hot take. Uh, it's the time of the show where we talk about how we felt about this movie. I'm going to start where I always do with my good friend Panda. Don't listen here, Dan. <laughs> I love this movie. Yeah, you did. Yeah, you did. <laughs> it got me. Uh, look, the the town was super. Even though it had very much the feeling that they were on a sound stage the entire time, yeah. I loved it. Uh, loved the feel of the film. Loved the actors. Uh, loved for the most part the plot. I thought was fun. Uh, there's some really dumb lines in this movie that mm. we'll talk about. I mean, some classically stupid lines, but otherwise, I, I enjoyed the movie. Mm. Yeah. Uh, I loved it. <laughs> I don't know what you want me to do. No, no, no. Uh, Christmas in Evergreen last year was one of my favorite movies of the year. It was a big hit. I was I was excited, and I was intrigued by the fact that it's Christmas in Evergreen too. But we don't. It's it's not a continuation. It's another part of the Evergreen story. I like the narration thing. All that works for me. Like it's this little storybook inside of this world called Evergreen. Uh, everything about it works for me. Uh, I love it. Super fun. Super Christmassy. Get it. Uh, this movie should be called Make Christmas Great Again. Uh, that should be the tagline. Because at one point they go, let's let's bring all the things back that make Christmas great. Like carols and candles <laughs> and bells. Those things never went anywhere, guys. Like, they're, they're still here. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. And, and let me get this straight. Lisa is basically going to go back to her hometown even though no one from her extended family is there. Not a grandma. She's just going back because it was on last year's New Year's resolution list for her to do so. Right. Um, And this movie does break ground from a tech standpoint because it shows you the screen as she's looking at it. Mm -hmm. Like she's looking at her phone and it shows you the screen in the top Mm left-hand corner. And I thought that was absurd. Um, (laughs) This movie was... Hey, look at this picture. (laughs) Yeah. This this movie was not good for a number of reasons and it was just really tough to watch. Having said all of that, two best leads we've had that I watched uh, during the holiday season. The, the leads had great, legitimately great chemistry. All right. Are you, did you guys, maybe you looked at it, but name that guy. Mark Declan. Okay. Who is from? Declan the Hallmark. <laughs> Declan <laughs> the Hallmark. He's for the 2017 classic Switched for Christmas. Switched for Christmas. That's Switched right. He's Christmas. the better of the two. He's the better of the two. That's, That's right. Exactly and then right. Uh, Jill Wagner from Pearl and Paradise. That's exactly and right. And they were great together. How do you feel about the fact that you're now getting to know these people? Well, and you're I like, feel oh, it's Pearl it's the tougher, Paradise. Oh, switch for Christmas. It's tougher to make <laughs> make fun of them because they're all so nice. True story. In a previous episode we recorded, I will not tell you when or where. I wanted to call an actress the opposite 
of a national treasure, whatever that is. Right. Uh, and I just couldn't bring myself to do it because I just feel bad at this point. But simultaneously, these movies aren't good, and everybody knows it. So, like, speak for yourself. Tell this like movie is Jim. Mm. Uh, it's time for all the feels. There's so many feels to be had in this movie. So many feels. I'm going to start yeah. the way. So, I. I might be reading into this. I feel like this movie is supposed to make you feel as if it's happening inside of a snow globe. Yeah. No, okay? I can buy that. So the way in which this, even the snow falls, it's clearly not real snow because of the way in which it's falling. But it's falling in such a way that it's the same type of falling as snow falls in a snow globe. Like, it was, it was, it was magical. It made me feel like I was looking at a snow globe but looking at a movie at the same time. It was great. Love it. Panda? Wow. wow. The unveiling of the store when they have staged it, uh, it just looks beautiful. They did a great job staging it uh, <laughs> for the movie. It was great. Really loved it. Gave me mm. good feels. It reminded me of those general stores you go into, old-timey general stores. Just mm, All so good. Loved it. Um, the father-son connection where uh, I don't, it's Mark Declan. What's his name in the movie? Uh, Kev. Kev. Oh, Kev. And his dad is out on the farm and doesn't want anything to do with Evergreen or Christmas since mom died. And then we find out that the letter was his, which is not some big reveal that they think it is. But uh, him, like, breaking down, father, son, that was that was really good. I was I, on board with that. And I, go ahead. Nope. Um, the reverse all the feels, or the the worst part of this movie was the double almost kiss. Oh, um, I mean, at this point, they're just going to near kiss at their wedding. It, it, like it's absurd. <laughs> um, and it took the, and they dropped the old "I love you" in this movie. Yeah, yeah. Um, they do. It was um, bold. But the father son thing was definitely the all the feels moment for can, me. Can we say uh, kudos to Hallmark for keeping in the flashbacks? Wow, and, and for keeping it like they they were could really have helped doing with the old things. Tom Kinder fiasco. Just oh, saying, would have. I think they listened to our party. podcast and was like, guys, we gotta we keep, gotta keep them in. <laughs> Don't make Randy in. look like a bad editor again because he's not. He's a <laughs> he's good, a editor. great editor. Randy, we love you. Sure. Do. Uh, it's time for wait. What? It's the part of the show where we wonder what just happened. Mm. Uh, it happened a few times in this movie. I'm going to start with my good friend Panda. Uh, listen, <laughs> the project management skills of these people involved. Oh. Uh, troublesome. Not great. <laughs> no. Uh, first of all, he's the only contractor in town, which is, I have questions. Yeah. Uh, but when they begin working on the general store, there's a pipe burst and they begin talking. They're like, can we get this done by Saturday? I think we, man, we're going to be really pushing it. But then later on they start talking. He goes, you know, we're not going to have time to set up two Christmas trees. There's just not enough time. The one's going to look sloppy. But, but first of all, there's time to put garland in the gutters outside. <laughs> Second of all, uh, he's. Did I misunderstand this? Kevin is only in town for a week. Right. He's not the town. He's, contractor. he's not the town contract. He's well, in they town don't for have a week, one. But he's been making. <laughs> no one's been building he's anything. Been making his way on freelance construction gigs that come up from time to time. So he doesn't actually have that much experience. All that to say, my man gets unnecessarily angry in this yes. movie. <laughs> just like moody, temperamental, and it's like, you it's know like, what? I, I feel like it's the most anger I've seen in yes. all of our movies. Mm-hmm. Like you, you know what, Kev? Maybe less garland in the gutters and more fixing the HVAC <laughs> vent hanging in the middle of Daisy's <laughs> store. I don't understand why that's so hard for you to understand as a contractor. I was very, very confused. We only have until Saturday, like... Why even try? <laughs> we can't do two Christmas trees. It will look sloppy. <laughs> you can't do Not it. Out of control. <laughs> Just played by Regis. That's right. You got another one? Uh, yeah. Uh, I've got to say that the, one of the dumber characters we've seen in a Hallmark film is the mayor. Thank you. Uh, God he, bless you. She mentions that you can stage a house, and he, she says, you know, you could do that with a store. And he goes, you can do that with a store? You can stage a <laughs> store? I, I'm concerned about the mayor's... Just well, mental health and well-being on a number of levels. Did you have a few more? Because I don't want to. Well, I just want to point out that he says at some point about the general store, what they knock it down and turn into a parking nope. lot. You nope. can't do that with that. It's nope. a strip. It, yeah, no, no. <laughs> if you knock down the general store, it would be not feasible to have a parking lot or a fast food restaurant, which needs a drive-through window. <laughs> he said fast food and parking lot. Mayor, what are you doing? What's your problem? You don't know how to do anything. And I'll say this. He is uh, Buku's wiser than he was in the first one. <laughs> oh, the God, first really? one, he's like, hey, Christmas, what do we do? Tell me, <laughs> that's before he knew about the candles and the carols that's and the right. bells. Uh, he's the mayor in the first one. He, is the, oh, he had just goodness. been. Uh, he had just what is been, he, 12 years old? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> he's the oh, youngest mayor. He's very proud was of that. Was Daisy in the first one? Daisy was not in the first no. one. No. Okay. Um, 
I'm done. Okay. That's all I got. You can go. Okay. I don't care. I'll go. Go ahead. Okay, thanks. Um, so at one, at one point, we find out that Lisa's parents were scientists and military. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, listen, maybe it's my naivete showing, but I don't know. There can be scientists in the military. Sure, 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 sure. But I will say it was a stretch. Like, it was a weird way to. It was like they were writing the movie and they're like, what would get maximum, like, drop? Wow. What if they're in the military? What if they're scientists? What if they were both? <laughs> and we'll astronauts and lawyers and doctors. Now, it is possible that one of, one of them was, was in the military and one of them was a, right. a scientist, but it was not worded that way. Mm. It was like, your parents were yeah. scientists? Military science. And military? Mm. Okay. Good for them. Yeah. Awesome. Not confusing uh, at all. Yep. And then my other my other thing was um, they they go out to to visit dad's farm. Yeah. And the typewriter's sitting there. Sitting out. <laughs> Just sitting out and about. Like it's been there for years. What's that typewriter doing there, guys? I mean, I know you had to bring in it back. The barn? I, t- I don't know. Just sitting there. <laughs> but it wasn't even in the barn. It was outside. It was outside of the <laughs> That's barn. That's what the secretary uses. She carries it around. She's like, I got a note. The J and H don't work, but you'll figure it out. <laughs> it does work though. The J and H do work. We find that out later. Uh-huh, right, yeah. Right, right. Hey, what do we do with this typewriter? What about in the barn? No, no, no. It needs to be out of doors. <laughs> needs to let the air get to it. That's important. For I just didn't know like why why is it there? Yeah. Why What's going on? At the farm, he also says, my wife Ruth and I ran this farm single-handedly. Nope, there's more than... It's, nope, you don't... If there's two of you, you're not running anything single-handedly. That's not how that works. Dan? Um, so there is a uh, character in this movie named Chris, and he looks like Santa Claus. Yes. Uh, we never get full confirmation that he's Santa Claus, and I don't think he is, and here's why, is because at one point... He finds a little key to show you that you wind up this car. And I don't know if you know how this works uh, because it's it takes one step. But when you wind up a car, a toy car, you set it down and then it goes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Chris winds it up and then he <laughs> zooms it off. <laughs> he shoves it hard. Which, which actually is counterintuitive. If you wind up a car and then try to shove it off, it'll just spin. Yep. And so he's never worked a toy car before. But that's because he's and had the elves. elves. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's, He's like, oh, how do these Santa doesn't works. make the toys. He just delivers yeah. them. Like, uh, read a book. <laughs> I've never Excuse gotten to say it yet. Me. I just wanted that's to. Right. <laughs> Santa's book of not of knowing elf. toys. Um, <laughs> Holly Robinson Pete is in this movie, and she she, how does she look not a day older than when she was on, hanging with Mr. Cooper? I don't know how she does. I didn't. I just wanted to mention her. There's um, more where she came from this holiday season. Oh, is there? Yeah. What, what else? Ooh. Another one. Okay, good. Um, so the whole thing with the key, uh, I've got a few issues, but the, it, it revolves around the fact that this boy is it, it's, who is its son that's, that's in the movie? It's, is it Holly Robinson Pete's son? No. Or is it, no, no, no. It is the, the guy who likes Holly. Yeah. His son. And basically what happens is, is they find, they have this box of keys and they find this one key and it is absurdly large, like cartoonishly <laughs> large. There's a big S on it, presumably for Santa. And it's got a very simple, like, end of it. It's not super complex, the key at all, but it's massive. Like, it's so big. And uh, Jill Wagner's character, at one point, looks at this kid and goes, just imagine all the locks this key could open. I mean, aside from, like, Santa's mailbox, I don't know (laughs) of any other locks. Like, this is not going to fit in any traditional lock in the entire town. Like, you've really narrowed it down to nothing. And can we just say, like, that this kid... Not the brightest. Well, it's just how old is he, man? But, but, <laughs> how old is this kid? Dude, also, he's exuberant. He's a solid al- 11. Yes, he can't be buying into this bit, but i tell you what he is buying into, holding the key in his hand at all times. <laughs> Because there are scenes where it's not in his pocket. Like, he's just, he's just, you just, holding, never he's just holding it all the time. Oh, this key. No, it didn't fit that lock. Of course it didn't, Donnie. That's a door. <laughs> <laughs> the key's bigger than the doorknob. What did you think was going to happen? Yeah, it's a, giant, it's a giant key. It, really, you can eliminate two-thirds of the, of the, the, the town immediately. Yeah. Mm, that's Santa's safety deposit box where he keeps his social security card. <laughs> Well, I got an idea. What about what about stockings instead of safety deposit box? <coughs> wasn't that's that a, call, a different that's movie? A, that's Graceland. That's a callback to Graceland. It was a different movie, but still, boy. Um, so it's everything with that key was absurd, like from start to finish, uh, and I found all of that super-duper cloying. Those were my two big way ones. Cloying. 
Uh, it's time for... <laughs> Luscious <laughs> that was like, that was <laughs> <laughs> Now Dave Ramsey's never going to hey. come on to say that. No. Hey, it's Siri. Luscious Locks. <laughs> it's time for What the Hallmark. It's the time of the show where we wonder maybe what happened before or after. They give us a little clarity of what happened in this movie. And I'm going to start where I left off with Dan. I'm confused at Kevin's uh, involvement in the choir. And I would like to know, <laughs> I would like to know the history. Kevin comes into town for a week and he's like, sign me up. <laughs> <laughs> but here's the deal. Here's the thing is. He can't do anything with Lisa. It's Lisa, right? I, they all run together. Yes. Uh, Lisa, <laughs> Amelia, Paula, they're all. Uh, Kevin says no to a date with Lisa because he's in the choir. Now, he's only in town for a week, but he is in there. He's got a robe on. He loves to sing or lip sync or whatever he's doing in there. And you know what? That's absurd. Like, it is patently absurd that you would come to town for a week and join the <laughs> choir, right? But, but... That's that that would be normal and compared to what happens next. Because the next two times that the choir performs, Kevin is not in the choir. <laughs> He's a flake. <laughs> so literally, he came to town and joined the choir for a practice. Yeah. And I just want to say this. This is why now I I'll I'll show my hand. I do I do work at a church and we have some policies policies in place for you have the, some for Polynesians the, in place. <laughs> we have some policies in place for the worship team, such as you have to be there longer than a week. That's right. Like you just don't want you just want to make sure that they're bought in. I really want to go on the date date with a girl I really have a crush on, but choir practice. <laughs> the old choir practice. First and last one. What Sorry. are they gonna do without me? Oh my goodness. Guess I'm, they'll find out when I don't sing. I'm a I'm a tenor. Do you know you think he walked out and they're all like who? Why was Kevin in choir practice? And who gave him a robe? He just sat back there. He brought you his should own. get the robe. I mean, that's advanced. And can we give it up for the the the, the choir director? That girl who's kind of oh yeah, has some, oh, for she sure. was into it. Yes, yeah, she was. I loved her. Mm. Did you notice that some people took off the robes and then others walked outside <laughs> with them? Like I'm keeping the robe. <laughs> Yeah, I, it's I, a cold I, day outside. It, but <laughs> did they did they invite Kevin to the performances that they had throughout the movie? And he was just like, you know, I turned down a date with Lisa to go to practice, but it's a no for me on performing. Well, I don't know. Maybe because the choir performances then were last minute. They're right. What well, no? Remember, no, they're in the robes two no, different no, no, no. times. I understand. I'm sure he got an invite. And he just said... He said, I can't do this. So he said no to Lisa to go to choir practice, but he said no to the choir. He said no to Lisa to go to choir practice, but that was before she, he found out that her and all of her were not a thing. Not a thing. Mm. Because, boy, he loves the ice. Yes, he loves the (laughs) ice. ice. Um, And so I'm still confused about that. If somebody could straighten me out there, that would be great. And then second of all, the Oliver and Lisa work for this woman, her store. I just want to know how she became as rich as she is. Yeah. Um, Because her stores seem pretty basic. Yeah. Um, But she's opening them up all over the place. (laughs) Uh, And and, and (laughs) she's doing it well, and she's paying them a lot of money. And so I just want to know more about her. That's all I got. Uh, I want to know a little bit more about, and I cannot think of the lay's name for the life of me. It's it's lay there. Uh, Sh- what does she do? Sh- Sheboygan. Give, give me- Sheboygan. <laughs> it's Sheboygan. Context clues. Give Sheboygan. It. They're decorating Christmas cookies, uh, and she looks at the guy and she says, "Is that a crown?" Uh, and he uh, goes, "That's Holly no, Robinson, a- Pete." Yeah, Hall- Sheboygan. Sheboygan. <laughs> <laughs> That's not her name. I don't know her name. <laughs> no one knows her name. No. W- what was her name in the movie? Don't know. Shaboy. <laughs> Just go with it. We'll get you your point. Okay. She, I want to know more about how she can identify reindeer cookies because I got to be honest with you. As soon as I saw that, I was like, That's a reindeer. And she was like, This is a crown. He goes, That's a reindeer. Uh-huh. Uh huh. I. I do. I will say that I did appreciate that cooking, baking, that baking cookie montage more than any other one, and I really? don't know why. Why? I just felt it to be a more sincere montage than most. So, oh. did you appreciate the fact that the the, the boy at one point says uh, that decorating a cookie is the same as painting and uh, decorating <laughs> rolled into one? I think that's what it was. Yeah, no, no, that had to be it. That's why I loved it. Um, I gotta be honest with you. Boy. I don't think every time that boy talked, I was in. I was yeah, locked no, 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 in. I was like, ooh, well, he's got key what in one hand. Seven year old, twelve year old. Uh, he was very exuberant. My my my. What the hallmark is? There is a sign that says that this is the 49th annual yeah, there Christmas and <laughs> Christmas and Evergreen Festival. And I want to know. This is a movie that takes place on the 49th year, which seems pretty insignificant. 
Will there be a Christmas Evergreen? They're setting three it up for a third for one. For the 50th and, uh, annual Christmas, Christmas Evergreen, Evergreen. The evergreeniness of all. <laughs> the evergreeniest. <laughs> Evergreener. <laughs> That's what I want to know. Are we going to get a third one? Is uh, it going to be the 50th year? Uh, they've con- Vickery confirmed there's going to be a third one. God bless her. Michelle Vickery. Could we keep doing like... Evergreen ones? Like, I think so. I think it's like, die evergreen? It's or? like the Saw, the Saw franchise. They just get better. I'll say this. I don't know if we're going to do all 900 movies next Christmas time, but I can guarantee you we will be back for Christmas in Evergreen 3. Wow. Can bold. guarantee it. It's a bold guarantee. We will guarantee. cover that next year, even if it's the only one we cover. <laughs> That's right. Even if we hang <laughs> this whole thing up, we'll I, be back next year I for did, this. I did have one more What the Hall Markets. I want to know who taught... Uh, Lisa, all of her mechanic skills on old engines. Yeah. Because between her and Kevin, they literally look at things and hit them with a wrench and call them this <laughs> and that. Did you try this? Tink, 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 tink. What, what about that? that? Pum, 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 pum. <laughs> like, it's nothing. They don't do anything and they start that bad boy right up. It's the magic truck. That's exactly right. That's Guys, ma- we did it. That's the sub of the third one. Christmas and Evergreen, the magic truck. Oh, I hope so. That truck's been in all two. Yeah. And I, hope it's, <laughs> I hope it's in all it's three. In all two of them. That truck's great, man. Mm. It is a nice truck. We, throw, a, throw a tree in there. and The garland right. just stays perfectly wrapped around it. Which, which which did you like better? Which vehicle? The one in uh, Godwinks? Yes. Or the they, one it was heavy truck. on the classic vehicles this weekend. It was. And I liked the truck. The truck was my favorite, for sure. I'm the other one the seemed car. unnecessary. <laughs> the other one was yeah. just like, hey, uh, it's like it's like they had someone just pull up to work one day with that car and was like, ooh, can we use it? <laughs> it wasn't nice enough to be a yeah, It was a just thing. random. It was, yeah, no, it wasn't. Oh, I thought that it was, was weird. It was, it was honey. It was, it was mm. lit. It was lit. Wow. Thanks for listening, guys. <laughs> Thank you. I mean, and happy if, Thanksgiving. If you're listening to this one, that means you've listened to three three days in a row to our podcast. So Guess God what? bless you. There's another one tomorrow. There's another one tomorrow, uh, and the next day probably. I don't know. There seems like there's a bunch. Um, They'll never stop. They just keep coming out, and you guys keep listening. So God bless you. Um, hey, if you have a second, go to deckthehallmark.com. That's right. Click on the ALM link. That's right. Give some money to help cure leprosy worldwide. We really do appreciate that. We appreciate your listening and Just commenting and emailing. Step in the room. <laughs> Guys, we'll be back uh, tomorrow <laughs> with another episode. Until then, Merry Christmas. Have a very, very, very happy Thanksgiving. Enjoy your family. Stop listening to us talk. Have a good one. Merry Christmas. Taking a tour of where your finances can go? Good plan. See how Northwestern Mutual's approach to financial planning is designed for your goals. Goals like protecting loved ones, growing investments, and planning for retirement. With our interactive tour, you'll discover how growth and protection work together to help make your dreams a reality. See what goes into a good financial plan at northwesternmutual.com tour. The Northwestern Mutual Life Insurance Company, Milwaukee, Wisconsin.